All right, guys, we've talked about the best survival knife money can buy going into the year 2024. Now that we are solidly into 2024, though, today I'm going to be talking about the best bushcrafting knife you can buy in 2024. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, it is kind of second verse, same as the first. But today, we're going to be talking about the Cold Steel Master Hunter. Now, the reason why I picked the Master Hunter is kind of similar to why the SRK was the best survival knife but a little bit different. Now, of course, this is a Cold Steel Master Hunter, and you can probably tell by the uncoated blade that this is also, or additionally, in CPM 3V, just like its bigger brother, the Cold Steel SRK. Now, a lot of people invariably in the comment section below probably are already typing out, you know, uh, why didn't you choose the SRKC? The SRKC is basically the same size as the Master Hunter. You can also get it in CPM 3V, and it's actually pretty similar to the price of the Master Hunter. Now, there's a few different reasons. First off, the SRKC, when I saw it, was going for about $99 in CPM 3V, whereas the Master Hunter was going for $89.99, so $10 cheaper and in my opinion and for bushcrafting use I felt the Master Hunter was actually a better option and I'll kind of explain why using my SRK. Now to be fair I've had multiple SRKs in a SRKC and of course now the Master Hunter so this isn't just my opinion on these two knives here. I have had more in field use these blades before in the past. And so what the biggest drawback to the SRKC is for bushcrafting specifically is a couple things. First off, uh, I do like the clip point on the normal full size six inch SRK. I do think it's actually a solid option for this knife, but when you scale it down to about four and a half inches, having this clip point kind of gets frustrating. And that is something that the SR or sorry, the master hunter gets rid of. This is just a drop point. As you can see, as opposed to the clip point, it is just a normal drop point and that makes it substantially better at the clip or at the tip for doing more uh, fine-tuned delicate tasks that require an agile tip. In addition to this too, the other big advantage for the Master Hunter over the SRK is that the SRK uses a flat grind, so just a normal traditional flat grind, whereas the uh, Master Hunter uses a full flat grind. And what this optimally does for the uh, Master Hunter over the SRK or SRKC is that it's going to give you a much more thin and slicey edge. And once again, for bushcrafting, I think that this is actually a better choice. Now, once again, this is CPM 3V, so I'm not all too scared of the stability at the tip. Some people might say, you know, like, how is the tip stability? For me, I don't really think it's an issue or a concern. And also, too, it's worth noting, as you guys can see here, that this thing still has a pretty thick, robust tip. And actually, the the spine of this is pretty thick and robust. It's actually the same thickness as the normal SRK. And that actually round, rounds off to the third reason why I like the Master Hunter over the SRKC. When you step down to the SRKC, you do op unfortunately get a thinner blade stock. So we're gonna put this SRK away so we can focus a little bit more on the Master Hunter, but those are the primary reasons why I recommend the Master Hunter over the SRKC. In addition to the last part um, that I'm just remembering, it's been a minute since I've owned an SRKC, but the last thing that I really disliked about the SRKC was that because it's functionally a scaled down version of the SRK, the SRK is a very well balanced knife, but with the SRKC, they literally just shrink the size of it. So you have a smaller, thinner handle. Whereas with the Master Hunter, you retain, once again, not only the same blade thickness as the SRK, but also the same handle thickness. And so one of the one of my least favorite things about the SRKC was how thin and just overall narrow the handle felt. Whereas with the Master Hunter, it still has a very full, very thick grip. And so once again, especially with bushcrafting um, more than even survival, there's a lot of emphasis on sitting in one spot, kind of, you know, really just using your knife to, you know, create thicker four deadfalls, to feather sticks, to um, create different notches for building projects. So uh, in a lot of bushcrafting actually heavily entails on you holding and using your knife for an extended period of time and the Master Hunter is going to be superior to that. So those are overall almost all of the reasons why I heavily suggest the Master Hunter. And ultimately I think that the Master Hunter is like 
a better, more budget version of the Falcon Even F1. Falcon Even F1s right now are averaging a like retail price of about $170. And when you can get a CPM 3V Cold Steel Master Hunter, which is essentially the same size as a Falcon Even F1 and actually very similar to the Falcon Even F1 because the Falcon Even F1 is a convex full flat grind. So this is just a traditional full flat grind on here, but this is a um, full flat grind, very similar to the F1. Once again, full Fully rubberized grip just like an F1 and um, about the same size and general profile as a Falcon even F1. In my opinion this is ultimately and we'll, we'll do a video really talking more about those experiences another time but really just like a more budget version of the Falcon even F1 that is made in a way better steel like CPM 3V over VG1 or sorry VG10 laminate way better so anyways that is um, kind of my look at this now as far as this goes like I said for what makes this a really good bushcrafting knife? So first off, once again, unlike the Cold Steel SRK, you're dealing with about a four, four and a half inch, I think this is a four and a quarter inch blade on this guy. So you're dealing with a pretty decently sized blade that's going to be still agile and still going to do a lot of very good like feather sticking style tasks. And as I had mentioned previously, that full flat grind is really going to help with this thing's slicing and ultimately cutting ability. So when you're trying to notch sticks, you're trying to create different styles of notches, once again, say like to create traps or even to help create structures. There's a lot of times when I use um, like large scaled versions of square notches to help lock in pieces of wood, especially um, when you're building structural portions to say like an frame or a lean to um, in Alaska it's really important to have um, sometimes ultimately kind of like creating a kind of notched peat system for your wood that you later lash together because here like even so far this winter we have seven feet of snow um, where I'm at and so having if you're going to build a wilderness shelter having the ability for it to take snow load where it's not necessarily probably going to take all seven feet but if you do get stranded you do have to hunker down overnight or shelter in place having the ability to create something like a lean to or an a-frame that can handle say two feet of snow is actually going to be valuable because there are times where our snow load here gets so high that you do actually genuinely have to factor it in to shelter construction or even if like in previous times of my channel you know I've gone out and built kind of shelter areas that I return to to you know test knives start fires enjoy the wilderness at the whole as a like, hole at the core, um, you know, so having, being able to build a shelter that's robust, that can handle a good deal of snow load is actually important. And so being able to notch um, is very valuable for that reason. And this knife is very good at notching. Um, also, this thing is incredibly slicey because one thing, pulling out the SRK one last time here, one thing that I think the Master Hunter actually does better than the SRK is the bevel. So you guys can see that is the bevel on the SRK there which is not a bad bevel but you can see that the bevel on the master hunter there is probably about I don't want to say twice but probably close to twice the length and I'm not necessarily saying that a long bevel is like automatically dictates that it's a slicey knife but by and large when we're talking about the longer the bevel um, usually the more slicey an edge and that is because that's just more time for that steel to thin out and so that means that there's going to be a typically speaking, less um, or lower degree uh, edge per side angle. So that is ultimately what you want when you're going to be slicing. Now, lastly, I think we'll round out and talk about the only thing that I kind of dislike about this knife, but this is a Master Hunter for a reason. And the last thing, like I said, the biggest thing that I dislike, and it's really a small dislike as a whole, is going to be the actual bevel or edge. As you guys can see, this follows a kind of like pattern um, just where it's a continuous belly. Now, this is something that you do want on a hunting knife more than on a bushcrafting knife. However, it is worth noting that there are plenty of solid bushcrafting knives that have this same style of edge, but there is a slight, not recurve, but a slight recession here. As the um, belly comes out, it kind of hits a maximum uh, kind of a maximum kind of angle or a maximum approach right around this midpoint right about here and then of course tapers back 
as it rounds across the belly. So kind of hard to express, but hopefully you guys can see that where the bevel here and the edge here kind of start out lower than they do here, and then it just transitions to there. So once again, this is going to be a better grind for slicing, long slicing cuts. And the reason why you want this in something like a hunting knife is having lots of belly, having a rounded overall um, kind of arc is going to mean that when you slice, it's going to have better contact with usually typically like textiles or flesh and going to do a lot of really good slicing as opposed to just having a straight edge. So this isn't necessarily optimal for bushcrafting. It's not necessarily a problem either, but it's not my favorite. And once again, going back to a more traditional style, like having a flat edge like this means that you're going to be able to set this on things. Say you want to baton, better contact surface. Say you want to notch, better contact surface um, on this knife. Now, once again, the belly is so minimal on this that you're not probably really gonna notice it. So that's why I say it's not really a huge dislike for me, but it is something worth noting. So that's gonna be my overview on the Master Hunter. It is very similar to the Cold Steel SRK, an incredible value. Once again, looking at this in CPM 3V, um, an incredible value for $89. This thing is just freaking insane. Um, this really is, like you're gonna hear a lot of kind of similar kind of ethos to the SRK and 3V where like this is the type of knife that because of the steel, because of the design, because of how this knife is made, um, this is the type of knife that you can get for once again under $100 and this is a really good end zone. Like if you just wanted to get that, like say you're done with your, you know, Mora Clipper for instance, right? Like say you want, um, you know, like you loved your Mora Clipper, it was a great knife, but you really just want to step up and get like that end zone kind of knife, like that final knife, like the Master Hunter is a really, really good spot for that where you can step up to this Master Hunter and this is gonna be something that's still completely capable of being an excellent bushcrafting knife, but you're also not gonna have to worry about really replacing it. This is like I said, like an end zone, like knife. Like this is just the end, right? Like you get to it and you're like, this is a knife that I can carry for the rest of my time bushcrafting and it's going to serve my purposes perfectly fine. I mean, even looking at it like this is my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, it also in CPM 3V, and you can see that very similar overall in size and the Master Hunter is just, just a hair bit bigger um, and just a little bit thicker. I think, yeah, they actually have about the same thickness of blade stock, which is actually great because I love 530 seconds. It's an excellent steel thickness. So once again, same blade material, very similar to one of my most favorite bushcrafting knives, like one of the best bushcrafting knives in my opinion out there. So I have absolutely no fears or trepidations recommending the Master Hunter. I think this is a like perfect, just about perfect bushcrafting knife, especially for it being like an end zone and especially like, especially for it being under a hundred dollars. It's absolutely insane. Like this is a complete steal. And I think the best part about this is like in this day and age, we typically only see knives getting more and more expensive, right? We typically only see things going up. So to see this knife at a, a very cheap price is just ridiculous. So anyways, that is the best bushcrafting knife that you can buy in my opinion. I don't really think there's anything else better than this um, for the price being there. Like obviously there are better knives. I like my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, but even this I would say might actually dethrone the Bushcrafter because it has that fully rubberized handle. So especially in the cold weather, there is a good amount of handle space here. It's thick, it's fully rubberized. And so it is going to be far more comfortable um, in cold weather than the Bushcrafter. So anyways, guys, and that is my take on the Master Hunter and CPM 3V. It is an incredibly awesome knife. And uh, yeah, there's not much more I can say, guys. As always, God bless and I'm out.